Nolan is a puzzle. The more you know about Nolan, the more questions you have. I've been studying Nolan for 10 years. To try and get to the core of who Nolan was and what drove him is always very elusive. We've invited you into the back room of the gallery today, into the conservation department, to speak to you about this great artist, Sidney Nolan, one of Australia's best known modernist painters, and the way that he used to paint using house paint. And I'm here today to show you an array of some of his paints, his original paints, um, including his travel box that he put together after the war to travel to Queensland. So this is Sidney Nolan's self-portrait that he painted when he was conscripted into the army in 1942. Um, he was sent into Western Victoria into an area known as Dimbula and he was actually guarding supplies uh, in case of a land invasion by the Japanese army. But while there he of course was still engaged with painting. In late 1942 he was promoted to corporal and that gave him an office in which he set up quickly as a painting studio. And this is one of the first paintings Nolan made using the new ripple and paint which had just arrived on the train from Melbourne. It was very brilliant in its pigmentation, these incredibly acid yellows made from chrome yellow and the beautiful deep red made from toyodine red but also they were inherently glossy paints. So he didn't have to varnish his paintings. The paint itself produced the gloss as it came out of the can. He represented himself in this painting, perhaps as an artist going to war with his camouflage paint on his forehead, but his artist's palette in his hand. The paint was very liquid and tended to flow down the surface of the painting. And we can actually see that in the forehead here where he's painted the hairline that the, the black paint has literally just poured down the forehead of the surface of the painting. So he had to work with his paintings almost flat on the table, just propped up slightly so that he could control the flow in the direction of the paint. So the irony is that the ripple and paint would have literally just run down the face of a palette, certainly held in this direction. It represents perhaps an, uh, a shield as if somebody is going to war as a piece of armour. But in this context, it represents Nolan himself as artist warrior. One of his first jobs that he got was painting signs on the top of commercial cars. But it was only in 1939 that he decided to give up his practice as a commercial artist and become a fine artist. So of course, 1939 is wartime. War breaks out and artist paints are no longer being manufactured. And so Nolan's familiarity with commercial paints really came into its own in that period. And then after the war, when perhaps artist paints were readily available again, this is what he'd grown to love and use. And so in this studio at Warunga, we don't see any traditional artist oil paint in tubes. It's all house paints of various types and forms. It is very unusual to have paint surviving in an artist's studio. We know that Picasso, for example, used ripple and paint also, but there are no cans of ripple and paint from Picasso's studio. The colours that are pulled out of the box today are the colours that are used on this painting, and we can really see them because they're painted on the lid of the cans, and they represent an array of mostly primary colours and whites and yellows. Here, here's the beautiful rich chromium yellow and here is the black. This one here, black number 1105. House paint, when you brush it out, needs to be flat. When painted on masonite boards, very, very flat boards as he did later for first class marksmen, it produced incredibly texturally flat paintings and his friends actually referred to him as Sid Linoleum because they'd never seen anything like it before. First Class Marksman is painted on a piece of masonite with ripple and paints. And you can see it's worked wet and wet, I think 
Perhaps one of my favourite parts is to look at the fingernails of Kelly in that painting. It's got these luscious black fingernails in which the paint has merged very much. It's actually very difficult to control and other artists became jealous later of Nolan's success and tried to find the magic in ripple and paint but found it very difficult. There's only one spot of red on that painting and it's this beautiful deep red of the ripple and red 16. It's the, the shot that's fired out the end of the gun. So clearly he hit something. It, he was indeed a first class marksman. So this is the box that Nolan put together for his travels to Queensland in 1947 to transport the ripple and paint. It's such an unassuming thing and it's such a utilitarian thing. So it serves a great purpose. It's very well conceived and it's put together from found things and yet it has this other magic quality to it. Even the, the paint that we find randomly splashed on the lid here has become some strange Nolan-esque painting in itself. His wife, Cynthia Nolan, said that Nolan always had to have the materials with him just in case. So this enabled him to work as he traveled. But actually when he went to Queensland, he didn't do a lot of painting while he was there until he got to Fraser Island and he stayed with the um, foresters who were uh, employed on the island. He was given space on the veranda of the foreman's house and that's where he set up a studio and he painted 12 paintings on found pieces of masonite that he salvaged from the island using the ripple and paint in the travel box. The painting of the island is a painting actually of Norm Crombie who was the overseer of the forestry workers on the island. Nolan said he was as much a part of the island as the animals themselves. His feet are buried in the beautiful white sand underneath the very clear water and he becomes the island. He represents the island to Nolan. Nolan is a puzzle. The more you know about Nolan, the more questions you have. I've been studying Nolan for 10 years. To try and get to the core of who Nolan was and what drove him is always very elusive. He wasn't a slow process worker working on layers over days and days. It was in the moment and on to the next thing. Actually, it's probably more an obsession, that total focus on production. And for Nolan, it's all about the moment of actually producing something and being in the flow of it. And a love of materials and a love of experimentation with different materials. In fact, he would often change his materials in order not to be too caught up in being proficient at it. So he was always being challenged and always finding unexpectedness in new materials.